today, lovelies. From Liverpool Lime Street and Manchester Piccadilly. Yeah, Saturday night, Piccadilly. <laughs> Saturday night, Piccadilly. <laughs> to the smallest stations, the railway is a lifeline for the north of England. Customer satisfaction, that's our destination. But the system is under pressure as never before. We've got a Leeds service cancelled, a Liverpool service cancelled, and a Piccadilly service cancelled. And staff are in the firing line. Move a bit more down for me, please, so I can get everyone on. Let you guys get up! What's the worst thing that can happen? You punch us. It's happened before, it'll happen again. I suck everyone from top to bottom is a complete waste of time. Now, cameras have been allowed behind the scenes. Oh. At the company that runs some of the busiest and most crowded trains in Britain, Trans Pennine Express. Guys, just stay there for me. Keep your head stuck. It's not sponsored. Filmed during a make or break year. We are expanding our fleet by over 60%. For Trans Pennine, this is the biggest thing we've ever done. It's gonna go right, it's got to. <laughs> Has to. This is the inside story of what it really takes to run a railway. Just with the weather, then nothing at all is moving out of Piccadilly. I can confirm the two children are on the tracks at the minute. And get the North back on track. We'll deliver for the North. This time, the weekend from hell kicks off. And Storm Kira brings havoc. Nothing at all is moving at the moment. The network seems to be coming to a halt, so um, yeah, it's not looking too great at the moment. It's Friday evening, the end of a busy working week for more than a million commuters who travel back and forth across the north of England. The end of the week, batting down the axes. But as the rest of us are starting to unwind, <whistles> the staff who keep this 24 7 operation moving Hello, Transparent Control. have a long weekend ahead. Right, I will certainly log it. I'll chase it up with them as well. And on a Friday night, drivers like Simon Powell need to be more alert than ever. People change as the, as the evening goes on. Obviously, a little bit more drinks involved. You get people, people heading out for a night out. Hen parties, stag parties. People get a little bit more careless, perhaps. And as a driver, you've got to be aware of these changes and, and react you know, unbelievably quickly when necessary. It's 10 p.m. In Hull, station supervisor and London native Dave Horan is working late. Strong arms. <laughs> I enjoy night shift, to be honest. The only thing my wife was... I don't get to see my wife a lot during the night shifts, uh, bless her, but uh, it's when you're the busiest and you can, you can really uh, achieve something. Because Hull is at the end of one of the busiest lines on the network, Dave has a particular challenge every Friday night. We set up the trains ready for the next morning. Now, that sounds quite easy, but it isn't, trust me. Um, it's a big Tetris puzzle. 20 trains need to be stationed at Hull overnight, but with only six platforms, Dave needs to put them to bed in the right order, otherwise they'll block each other in come the morning. Right. We we'll start making a plan now. Between 23.16 and midnight 23, I've got eight, nine, ten trains coming in. And we've got to have somewhere to put them. So... Dave could do without any distractions. I've just... Yep, shut and roll and going out that set. Let's go and have a look. But as the last man standing at the station, he also has to make sure none of his Friday night passengers do themselves any harm. You're all right. Can you not climb on the seats? We don't want any broken necks tonight. It's 
because we were doing, you know, Good Morning. Oh. Singing in the rain. Yeah. And we were doing the tap dancing Ah, uh, right. Would you be able to do that on the platform and not on the chairs? Because I, I really, really don't want to call an ambulance. We're going to go now. Bye, have Bye, a good day. night. Bye. Bye. Brilliant. Now we're back to back to this. But no sooner has Dave sat down. Oh, hello. Where's he going? Hello, mate. Yeah, I'm afraid they're closed. No toilets. No, no toilets at all, I'm afraid, no. Yeah, I was, sprint to them stairs. Yeah, well, I'd be oh, careful, no. yeah, because the stairs are oh, a bit no. dangerous, aren't we? Don't worry, and Dave. I don't want I am. I don't want to be calling an ambulance, all right. So just don't jump off the stairs, please. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> just watch this fella coming down here, will ya? He wants to jump off the stairs. <laughs> it's good that security were there, that was actually quite good, wasn't it? Working over here. Well, have you lost your papers, then? Yeah, my workings. Oh, don't ever get old, whatever you do. Have I dropped them out on the platform or. Oh, well, never mind. I'll have to do it from memory, won't I? Disorderly behaviour on the railways is at its peak at weekends, and it's down to the British Transport Police to tackle it. Officers Tom Wright and Chris Neely are facing the night shift. See you shortly. They're part of the Greater Manchester unit, which deploys officers to trouble spots like Piccadilly and Victoria stations. But tonight, the lads are manning the roving response car. A lot of work. Yeah, I'm guessing so. There are reports of an unconscious man outside Stockport station. Hello, that's the police. You OK? You had a few beers today. Yeah. Not wrong with that. Quite a lot of our time is taken up by alcohol-related incidents. You know, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with having, having a few drinks. The main thing is that people get home safe. You were sick. <laughs> Watch the sick. Oh, there we go. You don't get them. Uh... And boots ruined. Do you feel a bit better? Yeah. What did you do for work? Accountant. All right, OK. It's 11 p.m. A battalion of cleaners is emerging at stations across the north to prepare every single carriage for weekend service. Red cloths for the toilets and blue for the tables. But every train also gets a regular intensive deep clean every 28 days here at the Ardwick Depot in Manchester. Train presentation supervisor Tony Swan and his team are tasked with getting this unit ship shape for the morning. This train's just come on site. There's always a mess of marks on the carpets. We're going to do a periodic heavy clean. It takes roughly 40 man hours. Wipe the windows, the walls, clean the toilets, the cabs, clean the seats, clean every inch of the train, and then finish off with a good hoover in and then a deep carpet clean to end it. Cleaning trains on the face of it doesn't appear to be a dangerous job, but it does have its risks. We seem to go through a little phase where we was finding Stanley knife blades the blade was always facing up, down, down the side of the seats. That's why they use a scraper, not the fingers. What sort of person's putting razor blades down the side of seats? Well, no idea. Absolutely no idea. I wouldn't even like to consider anyone that would want to harm someone doing that. Don't know. But look, like I say, luckily enough, nobody's been injured with one yet. As you can see, quite a lot of litter gets left behind on the trains. What's the weirdest thing you've found on a train? You quite regularly find blow-up sheep. Um, the odd vibrator. It takes Tony's crew five hours to blitz through all three carriages, but there's only one man entrusted to operate the carpet cleaner. Phil Ackers. I think Phil's the oldest cleaner we've got. He's a Jack the Lad, 
that still thinks he's about 18 to 20. Always got to make sure the windows are clean for the drivers. <laughs> he's good at his job. Um, quite possibly our number one carpet guy. Every time he does the carpets, they always look good when he's finished them. What do you think to the boss then? Is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. Not too bad. Room for improvement? You yeah, got... he could pay me more, will he? <laughs> <laughs> One hundred miles away in Hull, trains are finishing for the night. And Dave's finally worked out which train should go where. So I've got my, my workings here that tell me what's coming in, what's coming out, uh, what platforms and everything. Tonight, the plan seems to be falling into place. So we're OK. <laughs> and it's no surprise, considering Dave's former career. Basically, I was a military air traffic controller. So actually, it's a lot like this. You have to slot aircraft in, and this is, this is just as difficult. All 20 trains are in the correct order, ready for tomorrow's service. Yeah, all in all, good night so far. It's all, uh, it's all slotted into place. Thank God. <laughs> Coming up. Staff need police backup. Right, well, watch your language, because he's speaking about a police officer there. Yeah, I know. You're going to get yourself in trouble. And football fans swamp Saturday services. It is intimidating what if someone starts fighting and you're in the middle of it. It's your train, you have to deal with it. Weekend late shifts are always busy for BTP officers Chris and Tom. Tonight, they're returning to Stockport after a call for backup. Three men have been ordered off a train but are now refusing to leave the station. It's just a call for disruptive males, so you kind of add in the risk factors of alcohol and the potential for anything else like that. Just good to have supporting officers here, to be honest. Chesterfield. What's happened? We're just getting the train out. I don't know. He's a Right, well, watch your language, because he's speaking about a police officer there. Yeah, I know. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Right. Well, don't call him C-word, then. Because you won't be travelling anyway if you carry on. What's happened? We well, always if you offer a train guard on the train, we said they're not, they're not getting on the train. So they've refused to travel anyway? They've refused to travel on the train, so I just told them she's late today, she wasn't going to go, I'm not leaving. Right. Right. Right, the bottom line is, mate, that staff have refused your travel for whatever reason. No, no, right, no listen, yeah. listen to me. The bottom line is, if, if staff don't want you travelling, we, as police officers, we can't supersede that decision. No, no, they say... The lads aren't backing down, but Chris comes up with a quick fix. Have you got Uber? Uh, I do have Uber. Why don't you have a look at what your Uber is to Chinley between the three of you? Yeah. You've got 50 oh, minutes to get to there. That? 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. They've been offered the chance to pick up a train home from a different station. Listen to me. No, you listen to me for a second. We haven't got the right. I'll just give you a good solution. We haven't got the right train. Just hit me voice down. I'll give you a solution. Right. Just watch your language in public. Don't speak about my colleague like that. All three finally take the hint. Yeah, three males have just been ejected from the station. Uh, I'll ask them to provide a full update shortly. As the ejected passengers stump up a hefty taxi fare home, Chris and Tom are looking forward to their morning off. Basically, needs to be at the gym for eight. But sometimes, if I watch like a video of The Rock in bed, it motivates me. <laughs> you go into that. Yeah, I've got a fresh box of cocoa pops for breakfast as well. It's Saturday morning in Manchester. It may be the weekend, but there's no let-up on the North's 24-7 railway. Good afternoon, Control. Gavin speaking. And staff are busier than ever in the control room, the heartbeat of the network. So 108 to toilet we've lost, 105 with the relay. While you're on the phone, 9013 is going to have to terminate at Newcastle, owing to no forward driver. 
Duty Control Manager Anne Smith is trying to prevent the first cancellation of the day. So we need to do a set swap at Manchester Piccadilly. To do that, we need a driver. We haven't got anybody. To solve this problem, Anne has to pull some strings. We've got a driver booking on spare later. I was asked him to come in early. I just sent a message to ask, is that driver able to come in? It's only 15 minutes early. Um, and he said yes, because it's my husband. <laughs> and I would uh, kill him if he said no. <laughs> a colour-coded system allows Anne to manage delays in order of priority. And a Glasgow to Liverpool Lime Street service has just gone code red. I thought we could bring it off, but no, it's, uh, it's dead duck. So unfortunately, my K5 is cancelled. So the train that's failed up in Scotland, we can't do anything about that. So we'll look at the return work, the Liverpool back to Glasgow. We want to run that. The problem is the crew is stuck on a broken down train in Scotland. To avert a second cancellation, Anne has just two hours to find a replacement unit, another driver and a conductor before the scheduled departure. Jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> As Anne works behind the scenes... On the front line, staff face huge crowds every Saturday. Over 100,000 passionate football fans use the railway to get to matches all across the north of England. For conductors like 24-year-old Jess Fenton, it's a daunting prospect. It is intimidating dealing with football fans. You're scared to go that train, and down that train, because what if someone starts fighting and you're in the middle of it? It's your train, you have to deal with it. trash the trains or they'll start being abusive to you because they're under the influence of alcohol. Who knows what's to come? Today, Jess is en route to pick up a 500-strong crowd from Scunthorpe. It can really depend who's playing. Some clubs do have reputations and you just have to prepare. I'm a big girl. I can handle myself. Back at the control room in Manchester, Anne's team has organised a replacement for the broken down train in Scotland. I'm going to get one across to Liverpool. So you're, start going, to for get, back working. you're going to get a unit to Liverpool for the back work, yeah. a 185. Yeah. Right, so the return work will start Liverpool. We need to make sure we can get them there then. Anne's pulled in another on call driver, but the Liverpool to Glasgow service is going nowhere without a conductor. The nearest available is 35 miles away in Preston. I've got an hour and 15 minutes to get the conductor to Liverpool. Hello. Five. Can you book me a taxi, please? Preston to Liverpool. Cabs are used to get crew onto trains in emergencies. The cost of a taxi is worth not disrupting the amount of people that they booked on that train. People stood their reservations and going on holiday. So you'll, you'll do anything because, at the end of the day, that train needs to run. But if the conductor gets stuck in traffic, Anne will have to cancel the train, leaving passengers stranded and Trans Pennine with thousands of pounds of refunds to pay. It's an hour's journey, so they've, they've got an hour and 20 minutes to get there, so... Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Over in Lincolnshire, Conductor Jess is just one stop from Scunthorpe Station, where she's about to pick up hundreds of football fans. Ladies and gents, we'll shortly be arriving into Doncaster. And for those in the front three carriages, football fans will be joining us at Scunthorpe. If you do not feel comfortable with this, I would recommend that you do go in the back three carriages. You will have plenty of time. By moving her other passengers, Jess hopes to contain any trouble in the front three carriages. How many people moved? They moved everyone. So, better to be prepared, I think. Humberside police have escorted the fans to the station.
dependent on the score is how they are going to be with you. Anything can kick off when they've already had a drink. <laughs> As the crowd piles on to the front three carriages, Jess tries to restore some order. Just move down a little bit, please. That's a minimum. Oh, the result of the match, however, could mean Jess is in for an easier journey than she thought. 2 0, mate. 2 0 to Mariners. Up the Mariners. Where you been? Fantastic. Fans are in good cheer. I say, Mum, I'm on the telly tonight. <laughs> but the amount of alcohol consumed is still a big problem for Jess. It's not working. Uh oh! Yeah, so the toilet's flashing at the minute, which means it's broken or it's not got no water or it's blocked. One bathroom, 500 fans, you know, it goes well, doesn't it? It's gone down, it's gone down. You can use it. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Whoa, whoa. Shut the door, shut the door. I don't want to see it. As the train pulls into Grimsby, Jess calls full time on her busiest service of the weekend. Sometimes when you dread it, it's all fine and the worst things happen when they're unexpected, but they're all in high spirits because they've won, haven't you? <laughs> it's 2pm. At Liverpool Lime Street, the 1412 to Glasgow is still without a conductor and at risk of being cancelled. But hope is on the M6. From the control room in Greater Manchester, Anne has sourced a replacement, Patricia Wright. We've come from Preston in a taxi to Liverpool to get our train to take it through to Glasgow. So it's a mad dash now to get the train out on time. If Patricia doesn't make it, Anne could be left with disruption along the entire West Coast line into Scotland. Oh, my umbrella. Oh. We're ready. Made it. OK. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard this Trans Pennine Express service to Glasgow Central. Thanks to Anne, passengers are on their way home to Scotland on time. We beg and we borrow and we, we do anything we can not to cancel trains, you know. Take it some passes, please. That is what we all think about as well. That's this priority to me, that if you're stood on that train, on that platform, your train's cancelled. It's not ideal. But as a busy Saturday draws to a close, there'll be no rest for the railway on the Sabbath. The control room has received warnings of a major storm approaching. Storm Kira is going to bring some wet and very windy weather to all parts of the UK. With storm force winds predicted and 251 flood warnings, keeping the network running will be tough. We try and make advanced plans for how we're going to react to it to try and provide some sort of train service on the day that's fairly robust. Weather uh, in here isn't always necessarily the hardest thing to deal with. I think on the ground it's much tougher. Coming up... Nothing at all is moving at the moment. Staff battle the elements... We've got about 44 people stuck on a train. ..and struggle with a defective unit... Miles off. Fucking hell. Keep the weekend on track. It's Sunday morning. 
and Storm Kira has arrived. Gale force winds and heavy rain are causing damage and huge disruption. Roads and section of railway have been closed, while many flights, ferries and sports events have been cancelled. The control room has cut services back to help the trains that are out on the track run smoothly. We've cancelled that from Manchester. But as reports of blocked lines and flooding come in, oh. it's down to senior customer experience manager Adam Fairclough to tackle the problems on the ground. I'm on call, trying to coordinate uh, responses at stations and on trains, making sure everyone's safe and gets on where they need to be. Adam could be sent to trouble spots anywhere along the 825-mile network. I've had a few uh, dodgy on-calls in the past. It just seems to cop for storm for some reason. But, yeah, get stuck in and get on with it. Bad weather forces trains to reduce speed. It's 45. The temperature speed reduces from 50 miles an hour and speed's reducing single yellow ahead. Not getting the nicest run over the, uh, over the Pennines today. It's coming down thick and fast. Apparently one of the worst storms in the last six or seven years. We're suffering quite high winds actually, so uh, blanket speed restriction across the whole um, northeastern region. We need to be really vigilant at this stage, ready to stop the train quickly if necessary. So up to 50. Whatever the weather, the maintenance depot still runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They need as many trains in service as possible for the morning rush hour. But a routine examination has picked up a wheel fault that could have led to a major accident. I won't get them uh, spacers, Carl, for the blocks. Right, nice run. Experienced technicians Steve Brundrett and Carl Moriarty need to get it back into service in the next few hours. This time of the year, we have to change the wheels because of the, the conditions out on the track you know, with them sliding and slipping because of the rain. There's a, a set of wheels that are damaged. You think, it's nothing that, but you get water behind it. When it goes on the rail, it compresses it and it's nowhere to go, so it, it splits then. And you, you're running along at 100 mile an hour on wheels that could basically fall apart. Two yellow high tensile steel stands take the entire weight of the 56 ton carriage. Both wheel sets in the bogey need to be replaced at the same time. All right, Dirk, yeah. So a four man crew needs to work closely in pairs on either side of the carriage. It's a job that needs good communication, so it helps that Steve and Carl go way back. Carl's my best mate, been his best man at his uh, wedding. He was a lot younger and had a lot more hair. <laughs> We've known each other since 1989. We go cycling, running together. But half the time, I spent half the weekend with him as well. It's like being a married couple. The lads get to work releasing the axles. This, this what I'm taking off now is the bearing keeper plate, so it holds the bearing onto the axle. Just making sure the bearings are coming out of the, the housings now. The wheels are lowered carefully so that the housings aren't damaged on the way down, but the crew is on the clock. We do have time limits. We've got a day to do both bogies. We're told uh, that they'll need the train for service in the morning. Each wheel set weighs close to 2,000 kilos, so the only way to get them out from under the train is to move the section of track they're sitting on. What we have to do now is raise this floor to take the wheels under to the other side to swap them over. Every stage of the process is a carefully choreographed ballet of solid steel and heavy machinery. You've got to 
be so careful when you're, you're doing wheels and axles. If you were to not fit something correctly, it could lead to a failure, and obviously there's the, uh, the dangers to the passengers and the train, and the safety, ultimately. Raising the new wheel sets into position is the most critical stage. Just stop, that's what we tell the apprentices. Any doubts, stop, then we can check. If just one of the bearings catches its housing on the way up, it could be damaged and the whole process will need to be repeated. But... Is that OK, Denny? Yeah, this Well, Joe's like, Ian. My name's Pauline. Right. One of the bearings has snagged. Is yours caught? No. It has. It's caught it. Fucking miles off. Fucking hell. If the bearing is damaged, the wheel change won't be complete before the end of their shift, and the train will be missing from tomorrow's rush hour. There is pressures on you to, to get the train out on time, but safety is paramount. Yeah. Definitely. It's 1 p.m. The weekend, like the weather, is going from bad to worse. 80 mile an hour winds are wreaking havoc with the network's overhead power lines. Hello, Manchester Airport. Hello there. And at Manchester Airport Station, Supervisor Nigel Rothwell receives more bad news. The tree's come down and it's touching the overhead wires, so nothing can actually move for the time being. As you know, there's 25,000 volts up there, so it's not taken lightly. So for safety, they've got to turn everything off. 14,000 people use the airport station every day. With all trains in and out cancelled, they won't be going anywhere until the line is cleared and the power restored. Ten minutes up the tracks, the tree on the line has left a train from the airport stranded between stations. OK. Adams arrived on the scene to ensure passengers are safely evacuated. You all right there? I'm going to just um, walk you around to the golf club until the coaches come, is that all right? Yeah. We've got about 44 people stuck on a train. Most of these people have just come back off the holiday. <laughs> what a welcome back to the country. Adam's bussing the passengers to Manchester Piccadilly, where he hopes to find them other routes home. Here we go. Adam speaking. But then, network control phone in. Right. Right, I'll advise people here then about, um, well, let's say on with travel options, but there aren't really, really any options, are there? Many more lines are now blocked. Nothing's going up the west coast, so between Manchester up to Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, there's nothing running out to Scarborough at the moment because there's a tree on the line, so the network <laughs> seems to be uh, coming to a halt. So, um, yeah, it's not looking too great at the moment. It's 3pm on Sunday, and Trans Pennine's weekend woes are getting worse. We've gone CSL2 Black. Uh, we've just stopped the northwest altogether now. Scarborough Line is currently blocked as well with a tree on the line just outside of York, so there's nothing uh, between York and Scarborough. It's not good. It's not good. The line out of Manchester Airport remains closed. There's nothing at all running at the moment due to the weather. So staff are diverting their weary foreign travellers onto the trams. Train for Preston. There's uh, no trains, uh, basically, at the moment. Uh, so you can use the uh, the Metrolink, but there's something of a language barrier. You okay, there, Bob? How are you doing? Uh, excuse me. Voice. Uh, voice. What you need to do is get the Metrolink service. There is no trains from here. Okay. I'll go there. Yeah. Go there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, he was Russian, so let's hear it for Google Translate. <laughs> Otherwise, he'd still be here now. <laughs> Adam's rail replacement bus full of stranded passengers is arriving in central Manchester. Where are you going? Liverpool. There should, yeah, there should still be some services running to Liverpool. 
With few lines out of Piccadilly left open, Adam's redirecting customers as best he can. Edinburgh shop, so you're going to have to go up through your... Um... Everybody will know that one's been mentioned, this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, but look, the whole, the whole railway is falling to pieces at the moment, so, um, so you're just going to have to try and do as best you can do from here. One has already had a long day of travel chaos. Oh, I was meant to be flying to Canada and my flight got cancelled. Still need to get back home, but it's just been a nightmare from start to finish. I was meant to be going to Blackpool North, but... You're not going to get to Blackpool North. Uh, Are you get on there. buses, or...? No, we can't put buses on because it's flooding on routes. The only thing I could do... I'll get you a taxi. I'll get you a taxi. Maybe right, one minute. With no other way to get him to Blackpool, Adam ensures the man isn't stranded 55 miles from home. All right, so we sorted you a taxi, so if you go over there, it'll be a streetcars. Yeah, all right. I'm sorry about all the disruption stuff, but we'll get you back. See you later, gents. The train is open at one. It's not stopped here. It's turning into a weekend they'd rather forget for passengers and staff. Hello, Transpennine Control. And the blocked tracks will leave trains out of position for Monday's rush hour. You're not going to make your back working, so we'll just cancel the round trip, OK? But nothing can stop the work at the maintenance depot. Let's go down again, Carl. All the way off. All the way. This unit will be badly needed for the morning commute, so the pressure's on Steve and Carl to complete the wheel change and get it back into service. At the back of the wheel, they get a build-up of uh, dirt off the rail, and so uh, when you go to put new wheels up, the dirt now holds the wheels off the bearing, and it's like, it's like concrete sometimes. You get behind it with a scraper and basically just peel it all off. If there's one man made for a crisis, it's action hero Steve. People do confuse me with Jason Statham. I actually did a stint where I was his double, you know, at like 40th birthday parties or hem parties and stuff like that, and I'd used to come in as Jason Statham. But the pressures of shift and stuff like that, I had to give it up. After cleaning, they attempt to raise the wheels into their housings again. Going up. If the bearings don't fit this time, the train will be out of action tomorrow. Hold it there. Hold it there, Carl. Is that one OK? That one's fine, yeah. All right, Carl. All right, it's all right now, yeah. The bearings have slotted in perfectly. The fixing plates are secured and bearings caps put in place. That's one, bro. The wheel change is complete just five minutes before the end of Stephen Carl's shift. Hopefully it'll be out um, tomorrow morning in service. Safety uh, always comes first, so we, we work round that and uh, nine out of ten we're, we're always on time, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. It's 5 p.m. Adam has been pulled from pillar to post all day trying to help passengers affected by the storm. So I'm going to have to go and clean my shoes now as well because they're really muddy and wet. <laughs> and now he's on his way across the Pennines to deal with overcrowding at Leeds. As Yorkshire's hub station, even on a quiet weekend, over 100,000 passengers can pass through here. At peak times at Leeds, it's incredibly busy, easily one of the busiest parts of our network. So um, if there's any disruption, numbers can start building up pretty quick. But it should be all right. I don't think it'll be chaotic. We are sorry that the service to Newcastle has been cancelled. But thousands of passengers displaced by the storm have built up at Leeds. Adam's challenge is to get them home for the start of the working week with a massively reduced service. We've got six trains every hour uh, that come through Leeds on a daily basis, so right now we've had one in the last hour or so, so you can see how it impacts. It's going to be a busy train. It's going to be a very busy train. Did you 
just let people get off first, please, and then you'll be able to get on. They won't go without you. Let the guy get off. Just get off first. This evening, I think, is diabolical. And there's no bus replacements being put on. People who are stranded, get something done. And that's the bottom line. Get something done. <laughs> you spread down. If you go down to Walter, you're going to get on quicker. It's standing room only, but Adam's managed to clear the platform. Phew. <laughs> and finally, the clouds are beginning to lift across the network. Lines are being cleared and power restored to overhead cables. Which is good news for passengers and staff at Manchester Airport. Yeah, I've just had word now that I can reopen the stations. Customers are coming back from the Metrolink back over to us, and then we're going to start moving the trains. People are moving, people are getting to where they need to be, so yeah, I think we've done all right given the, uh, given the situation. After a weekend from hell, things are finally coming together on the railway. Trains are heading out to get northerners to work. Staff in the control room have managed to get 69% of services back up and running overnight. And drivers like Simon Powell finally have a clear track ahead. The last few days have been very interesting weather-wise and it's always good for a little bit of drama. But I do feel an immense sense of satisfaction when, over a weekend like this, uh, we can still get many of our customers to work on time on their regular Monday morning commute. The daily grind awaits gloomy commuters, but the stormy weekend hasn't dampened Simon's spirits. Life's good. It, uh, it beats sitting behind a desk any day, definitely. Next time. Well, they're all fighting here now. Guys! It's all kicking off across the network. It's quite scary after things can change. Engineers must hoist an entire three carriage train into the air to fix it. I don't like it, does it? Is everybody okay? And there's a bomb alert. We have a bag that was left deliberately unattended. It's next Wednesday at 9 as the new series The Railway 24-7 continues. Tomorrow night at 8 on board one of the most advanced warships in the world, we check out what life's like below deck in the Royal Navy. Next night, a &E after dark uncut and the night shift begins quietly enough, but no doubt that will last.